in this example, we will find the domain, the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, any holes, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, or oblique or slanted asymptotes in order to be able to identify the graph of a given rational function. This rational function is already in factored form. We have the quantity x plus 2 times x minus 3 in the top in the numerator. And in the denominator, the polynomial in factored form is quantity x plus 4 times quantity x minus 4. What we notice is that nothing is going to cancel. None of the factors here are identical in the top and bottom. So nothing will be canceling out. In other words, we will not have any holes. So we'll go ahead and answer part 4. There are no holes. Okay. Uh, we can answer the domain pretty easily because we know we can't divide by 0. So if we set each of the factors in the denominator equal to 0 and solve, we'll find the values that need to be excluded from the domain and also the values that we'll use to make the equations of our vertical asymptotes. So we can now answer number 1 and number 5 by setting x plus 4 equal to 0 and solving and x minus 4 equal to 0 and solving for x by adding 4 to both sides. And so now we know that we're going to have vertical asymptotes at the vertical lines negative x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 4. And we also know that for the domain, we should not let x ever be negative 4 or positive 4 because then we'll have undefined results. So that means that if we graph this on a number line, and we plot 4 and negative 4, and then we make our holes, at those places. That shows where we are not including certain values of x in the domain. Okay, and so writing that in interval notation, that will be from negative infinity to negative 4, union negative 4 to positive 4, union 4 to positive infinity. So now we have finished part one and part three. Whoops, not part three, um, part five. And we also did part four so far. All right, now let's find intercepts. So the y-intercept, remember, will be where you're on the y-axis. So on the y-axis, Remember that x is always going to be 0. So in order to find the point where the function would cross the y-axis, all we need to do is evaluate f of 0. So plugging 0 in wherever there's an x in my original given function, like so, and then simplifying, we have in the top, we have 2 times negative 3. And in the bottom, we have 4 times negative 4. So that simplifies to negative 6 over negative 16. Or you could have canceled the 2 into this 4 here. And then you would have... this would become a 1 and this would become a 2. Also, the negatives become negative divided by a negative makes a positive. So then I would have in the top positive 3 and in the bottom 2 times 4 is 8. So that would give me my y-intercept, 3 over 8. And the x-intercepts occur where the function is crossing 
the x-axis, and on the x-axis, y is always 0. So this time, we want to set the whole function equal to 0. So this time, we want to set the whole... So this time we want to set the whole function equal to 0 because remember f of x is another way of saying y. When we plug in x values, we get a result of a coordinated y value. So how can we make the y equal 0? Well, the numerator of any fraction, when it is 0, the whole thing becomes 0 because 0 divided by any number is still 0. So all we need to do is set the numerator equal to 0 and solve for x. So we're going to take x plus 2 times x minus 3, set it equal to 0, and then solve for x. Now I know that if this factor were 0, then the whole thing would become 0. And I also know that if this factor were 0, then the whole thing would become 0. So setting each of those equal to 0, I get x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 3. Those two values of x will make, uh, will, will coordinate with a y value of 0. So that is where the function will cross the x-axis. So the two x-intercepts as xy coordinates would be at negative 2 comma 0, and at positive 3 comma 0. So we finished number 3 now. We're looking at number 6 and number 7. We won't have an answer for both of these. We might have a horizontal asymptote, and if we do, we will not have a slant or oblique asymptote. Okay. If we have a slant asymptote, we will not have a horizontal asymptote. Now, the horizontal asymptote is usually easiest to identify quickly. And you look at the degree of the numerator's polynomial compared with the degree of the denominator's polynomial to figure out the answer. Now, if the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are equal, then you're just going to take the lead coefficients of both the top and the bottom and make a fraction and that will be the constant for your horizontal line. So if this thing were factored out, or not factored out, but multiplied back together, right now it's in factored form, what does it look like if you FOIL it? You know, if you multiply it back out like this, you know, multiplying, let's see what Okay, after multiplying it out, this is what we have. In the top, the polynomial is x squared minus x minus 6. In the denominator, the polynomial is x squared minus 16. They are both degree 2 polynomials. So since the degree of each of them is the same, we want to look at the coefficients. The lead coefficient of the top polynomial is 1. The lead coefficient of the bottom polynomial is also 1, so we will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 divided by 1, which is just 1. And this means that since we do have a horizontal asymptote, we will not have a slant asymptote. So those parts are done. Now why did we do all this? Because we want to be able to identify the graph of this function. And if we look for a graph that shows or exhibits these qualities, then we know it's probably the right answer, right? So we are looking for, here are some of the easiest things to look for. You can look for your asymptotes. So there should be vertical asymptotes at, what did we say? x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 4. So here is where 4 is on my x-axis. And notice that if I draw a vertical line, that surely does look like the electric fence that is bounding 
the function in this region. You see how the graphed function is avoiding that vertical line? And then also, we see it for x equals positive 4 as well. x equals positive 4 is right here. And so we can see that the function, the graphed function, is avoiding that line as well. So that's looking good so far. So I would say, hey, we got uh, so far a good indication because of the vertical asymptotes that this might be the right graph for the function. What else can we look for? Um, the horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Now sometimes the horizontal asymptote can be crossed, but sometimes it isn't, and sometimes it is easy to identify. So let's see if we can find it here. So the horizontal asymptote is supposed to be at y equals 1. y equals 1 right here. Okay, and yep, sure enough, it looks like the function is avoiding that horizontal line. See that the horizontal asymptote is checking out. Uh, we can also look at the y-intercept. The y-intercept is supposed to be at 0 and 3 eighths. So, so at x equals 0 and y equals a little less than half, we should have a y-intercept. And that does look like that could be the point Okay, so that seems to be checking out. Also, the x-intercepts at negative 2 comma 0 and 3 comma 2. So at x equals negative 2, which is right here, notice we do have the point negative 2 comma 0. We have a point right on the x-axis at negative 2. We also have one at positive 3. So our x-intercepts are checking out. All right, so it seems to me we have very good signs here that this is the correct graph of the function.